Hi guys, uh, this is Stacy. I am back again today with another Cricut Explore video. For today's video, we're gonna be cutting out cardstock and adhering it to a piece of wood to make a sign. The first thing you need is your piece of wood. I went to my shed, found one that was already cut for me. You wanna measure your wood, mine is 23 by seven. You wanna write that down. So we're inside design space, we're gonna make a template for our wood so we can make sure what we're gonna put on here will fit on here. Now my wood already came white, it's primed white. You know, if you wanna paint your wood, stain your wood, distress your wood, or leave it natural, it's completely up to you. You can sand it down to kind of distress it. If you do sand it, you wanna take a wet cloth or a wet wipey and wipe it away so all the um, sawdust is not on here, otherwise your lettering won't adhere. Now the sign we're making is for my husband for his birthday. He's seen this idea on Pinterest. I saved it to make it for him. Right there, it says, ride it like you stole it. And even though this is in, two, in one color, we're actually gonna do it in two, or I'm gonna do it in two. I'm using cardstock. I'm using just a black piece of cardstock and gray. Um, we're gonna go to Google, find a bike image we like, and then the lettering over here will be in um, the gray. Even though my wood's 23 inches wide, we're still gonna use a 12 by 12 mat because we're using two different colors. Now, if you wanna use vinyl, you certainly can, but I'm using cardstock. Now, to adhere the cardstock to the wood, we're gonna use Mod Podge. I make my own, it's very simple. I shared how to do this in my um, holiday block video, I believe, and I already have enough in here to do this, but to make it, just take liquid glue, school glue, it can be Elmer's or any brand you want. Make sure you have two of them the same size. Take both glues, dump them into a jar. When they're empty, fill one with water and kind of go back and forth between this one and the other glue to get all the glue out and pour it in here. So it's basically two parts glue to one part water, put it in a container and you have Mod Podge. And we're gonna adhere that or apply it with um, little sponge brushes. When we're done the sign and it's dried, we're gonna flip it over and attach something here to where he's able to hang it up. Now, if you don't wanna use the same exact lettering I'm using or the image, you don't have to. You can certainly play along. We're gonna to go to Google and grab the image. You know, you can grab any image you want. You know, if you wanna put a dog here, you know, whatever you wanna do, you can put here. And the lettering we're gonna be using um, once are already in the Cricut subscription plan. So have access to those for free as well. But anyway, let's go to go to the Cricut and get started. All right, guys, at the computer, you want to go to go to the Cricut Design Space web page. You will get there by going to cricut.com slash design. You're going to see this screen here, up left-hand corner where it says account. Click on that, then click on sign in. Enter in your email and your password. You can verify your login when you see the message here and also when you see your name in that green box. All right, go ahead and click on create new project. Left-hand side toolbar, click on insert image. So you're going to bring up the image library. In the search box, type in the word square for our wood template. Now I'm going to scroll down to find a free one. Right there, click on that. Make sure you see the uh, little check mark there. Insert the image to your mat. And you want to resize the square to match the wood that you measured. So have your square selected. On the right hand side, go to edit. You'll see the size here. You'll also see a lock connecting width and height. You need to unlock that lock, so click on it to open it and enter in the dimensions for your wood. In my case, my width was 23 inches wide. I'm hit 23, hit enter. My height was seven inches. Put that in, hit enter. All right, so I have my wood here, my template. I'm gonna change the color of that. Go to layers, have your square selected. Click on the square here, then choose the color you like. I'm gonna just pick on cream so it's not as bright for us. All right, now I can't see all of my wood on the very bottom where it says 100%, click on the minus sign. Now my template is smaller, trying to be able to see it on the screen there. All right, in your web browser, go to a new tab. You wanna to go to Google and type in motorcycle silhouette. Now, if you don't wanna use a motorcycle, you can use any image you want. It could be a dog silhouette, bird silhouette, what have you. Under the search bar here, it says web, then images. Click on images. So it's going to bring up larger images of the bikes. Then find one you like. I'm going to choose this one right here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to right click on the image, save image as. Type in bike, then hit enter. And the reason you want the word silhouette after that is going to bring up like a blackout image or a shadow image. So there's not a lot of layers to it. I have my image saved. We can close Google out now. Go back to design space, left hand side toolbar. Now you want to go to upload image. You want to go to basic upload, then click on upload image there, browse, and then find your image you just saved. Mine is right there. I can see it there. Hit open. We can see it here. Now, this is a simple image. We're going to check here where it says simple. Make sure you see the check mark. Click continue. Now, if I hit preview, 
I see there's a, a square around my bike. So I'm going to undo preview and click around the bike. See the square appearing? You want to click on all that. Now everywhere you see white, you want to click and make it be the dotted pattern. I'm going to click on the inner wheel like that and then over here. I think I got everything. Go ahead and click on preview again. All right, that's how my bike looks. I like the way it looks there. Go ahead and click on continue. I see the red outline of my bike. Now you can name it. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call this hubby bike. You can use keywords to tag your image like if you know bike, motorcycle, what have you. I'm leaving that part alone and then click on save. And I see the bike there. Click on that. Make sure the check marks there. Then click on insert image. And that's going to bring the bike to our mat. I'm going to make this larger to fit right here. And I remember I'm only using a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock for my black motorcycle. So I need to go edit. Make sure I'm not past that. I'm at 10.3. I can go a little bigger there. I'm at like 11 inches. I think that's good. All right. So now I have my bike where I want it to go on our wood. Now I want to add text. I'm going to go on the left hand side toolbar. Click add text. I'm going to type in ride it like on all in the first letter with all caps hit enter like you stole it okay now i want to change the font so i have my font selected under my edit panel i i can choose all fonts i'm going to click on that and go to cricut fonts so it'll bring up the ones that are included in the subscription plan it's by default it brings up cricut alphabet click on that and then find a font you like and all the fonts that have no price tag attached to them are free in Design Space as long as you have the subscription plan. Like you see here, Cursive 101, that one they want you to pay for. So I want to find one that's free. That's kind of manly. I'm actually going to go up and pick Art Nouveau. And I made this bigger here. Okay, I kind of like that font. I'm good to go there. So I'm going to bring my font down, my box. Now I want to make it wider, but if I make it wider, this way is going to go past the bike. So I'm going to unlock the lock by opening all my text here, then click on the little green box, and I can move it down like that. Okay, so that's how my sign is going to appear. I think it looks pretty neat. All right, now we can delete the square rectangle behind that. Click on that, then hit delete on your keyboard. We were only using that for a template. All right, now if you look here, let's go ahead and click on go. All right, it says the printable image is too large. Reduce the size of the image because the bike is bringing, it's going to, it wants to print the bike out. So have your bike selected, go to your layer panel, and you will see all your layers. See the lettering has scissors next to it. The bike has a printer next to it. So when I have the bike selected, up top there, click on unflatten. All right, now you'll still see a printer next to the bike. Click on the printer icon and change that to the word cut. That's going to cut the bike out. Now we can go ahead and click on, oh, before I do that, I want to make sure my size here is fine. Okay, so I'm 11.18 wide. Make sure your width is not longer than your, or it's not wider than the paper. All right, we are good to go. Let's go ahead and click on go. So we have our bike there and our text. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on go. I have one mat loaded with gray cardstock and one mat loaded with black cardstock. All right, so zoom my lettering first. That's in the gray. I'm going to load my mat up. Hit load. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and meet you back at the table to put the um, our sign together. All right, guys, everything cut out really well. I'm going to take the bike off. It actually looks pretty neat. I like that. All right, I missed that little piece there. Just go ahead and take that off of there. Now we have our lettering. Now the lettering is going to be a little bit difficult because if you want it to be straight, you're going to need to use a ruler of some sort to help line you up. All right, so what I'm going to do is bring my wood over here and kind of draw. I think I'm going to work over here where on the right-hand side where my bike is going to go. Like that. I do like that. And now the lettering... I'm going to take each letter off. I have my little Cricut spatula here to kind of help me along. I mean, this font is really pretty. So if you're looking for like a manly kind of font, I do recommend the, um, what was the Art Nouveau? Is that what we used? Yeah. OK, 
Okay. Get all the letterings off. I'm gonna hit pause and do all this and come right back. All right, guys, we're back. I have all the letters done. I'm not gonna worry about making them too, too straight. You know, if you want to, you can bring in a ruler. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is flip this bike over. Take our Mod Podge. Now remember, it's just two parts of glue to one part water. And I just have an old peanut butter lid here. I'm gonna first shake this up. I'm gonna pour some in here. You can see it's pretty thick. All right, we're gonna take a little brush. This is just a sponge brush. I'm gonna kind of dip it in here first. And then spread it across my board. You wanna do a thin layer. Okay, all the way across, make sure you're pretty good down there. Nice thin coat, but even. All right, take the bike and lay that where you want it. Okay, I think right there looks good. Now you're gonna go over the bike as well. well actually, I'm not gonna go over the bike yet. We're gonna do our lettering first. I'm gonna kind of scooch this out, make sure you can see this. Okay, so just do like one letter. I'm gonna go back to my smaller brush. I don't need that big brush. Okay, just kind of wet your wood where your letters are going to go. Like I said, I'm not too worried about making them straight. Can I have my eye here? If you want to bring in a ruler, you can. And in some cases, it might be easier to do it wonky. You know, I find if I'm trying to go straight and I, and I don't, or I'm off a little bit, it's noticeable. But if you purposely go wonky like I'm going to do here, then they can't tell. Hear the birds? I do apologize, but it's nice out here and I got the window open and they hear birds outside, so. You just kind of take your sponge and kind of just dab it there. Just make sure it sticks. Okay, then do our next word. Just a little bit of glue each time. I'm gonna bring this one over here like that. Leave enough space to where you can tell it's a different word because the font is a little bit different. I do like it though. Okay, bring that guy up here. And you're gonna get sticky fingers. Okay, then these words. Just make sure you're allowing yourself enough room to where they're gonna fit. I'm gonna bring that one up here like that. And that a pretty font. I do like it. Alrighty, one more. Or three more, rather. You can just thin layers as you go. I have my dots eyes over there. While I'm going over here, I'm gonna go with the bike as well. Give the bike a quick coating. I'm gonna go back to my larger brush. Okay, and bring this back over here. Again, just a thick coat. We're probably gonna do probably two coats of Mod Podge, I think. And you know, you'll see it's white because we're using the school glue. It's okay, it does dry clear. I have a little bubble there in my, in my bike. Take your fingers, wet it in the glue, then go back over it. Okay, and that'll get rid of the bubbles. But again, don't have sticky fingers, but. All right, now we're gonna do the last one here, the last phrase. But they are really yapping today. I'm trying to hurry up. Now you see I'm getting dribbles across my other letters. You want to catch them as they as they happen, okay? Okay, a few more. And you know, you can fast forward this part, guys, but I'm not going to edit it out. This way you can see the entire thing. So the most important part here is making sure every part of your letter sticks down. So if you need to kind of sponge over to do that, do it that way. 
Even though my letter's not going up here, I am putting glue there so I have the even coat of glue all the way across the board. Okay, a little bit more glue and we're almost done. I'm a little tight over here. I probably should have moved that S over, but it's okay. He ain't gonna care. I'm gonna actually bring this one down here more. Okay, so there you have it. There's our sign. What do you all think? Okay, I think I kind of messed up down here. I maybe can move them. Let me see. Nope, not really. Sometimes you can, the glue is still a little bit wet. There we go, I can pick it up. I can move them over a little bit so I'm not so close. I'm gonna take my little spatula since the glue is still wet. You can maneuver it a little bit. Okay, there we go. Whoa, come back here, come back. All right, now I forget which way this went. Oh, there we go, okay. Bring that guy down here. There we go, I think it looks a little better. Now I got glue all over my hands. I'm gonna go back over them real quick, only because I don't want fingerprints in them from me moving them. To make sure they stuck down. Okay, so you can put this outside. Oops, forgot the dots of our eyes. Can't forget those. Go back and add those. And they're little. It's a little tap to make sure they stick. Okay. There you have it, guys. What do you think? I think it looks pretty neat. All right, let it dry. You can see it's pretty glossy. And again, over here, I got a bubble under my bike. Take your finger, make sure you put it in glue, otherwise you're gonna tear your paper. Okay, just gonna go over that. Just make sure it all sticks down. You're not going to see all this. You know, it's all going to dry clear. You want to make sure you have contact, though. And whenever you go with your fingers, just go back over it. Just with a smooth layer. Okay, a little bubble right there. Just going to wrinkle them out. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to let it dry and come back when it's all dry, and we'll work on the other half. Hey guys, we're back. Our sign is almost finished. Our motorcycle is a little tacky, but not too bad. Uh, to hang this up, what I'm going to use are these little hooks. I believe these are called eye hooks, I think. And what I did is I marked on the top one inch on from each end, and we're going to screw those in there and use wire to hang it. So I'm going to grab this little hook, kind of move it over there a little bit, kind of put it on there, and you kind of got to press it in there first to get it in there. I was going to pre-drill it, but the hole is so little, I think we're going to be good. Maybe not. Just kind of push and turn. Push and turn. If you find it's not going anywhere, you can take another screw, kind of hold it in there, and take a screwdriver to kind of push down and give you a little bit more starting room there. Okay, so I got that started a little bit. That might work a little better. All right, then we can push this in. Yeah, definitely better if you start the, if you start the hole first. And it's going to get tight on you as you go around. But just stick something through there like a screwdriver to kind of help you turn it. Okay, I went in as far as we can go. And I'm actually going to have it go the other way. Like that. So if you're looking at it, it's going that way. Okay. All right, let's do the other one. We're going to start pre-start that screw again. And again, I went in one inch from the end. Put that down there and kind of start the hole. Yeah, using the screw gives you more leverage to push down. Okay, take that guy out, pop this guy in, and then just push and turn. This one's giving me a bit more harder time though. You gotta kinda keep it straight as you're going. Just till it grabs it. There we go. I thought I had it. It'll grab. 
Maybe not. I just pre did that hole again. It could be the screw I'm using is a lot fatter than the um, that piece. That could be why, but. All right, now we're gonna be good. Kind of hold it straight. Yeah. Okay, it's grabbing. All right, maybe not straight, it may not be straight, but it grabbed. So turn it around, keep on going until you go all the way down. And rather than have it be straight like that, see how it's like that, I want the circle the other way. Okay, all right, so we have our hooks in there. Now it comes with wire, this little kit came with wire, or you can just pick up any kind of wire or use string. All right. And the key is you want the wire to be super tight. I'm going to screw over here, thread my wire through, and I'm just kind of wrapping it. Oh my gosh, that'd be any noisier. I'm just going to take this and just wrapping it around a few times, like a bread twist. And then I'm going around. I have my wire here, and now I'm taking the extra wire and just going around the base of the screw. Okay, so there's that one. Bring it all the way across and just go through this hole. And again, as tight as possible because it's going to give when you hang it up. So I'm in there nice and tight. I'm as tight as you can handle it and then wrap it around. nice and tight there. So continue wrapping as much wire as you think you're going to need. And then go ahead and cut it. I have a tidy as wire cutters, but I don't have any near me. And then just kind of thread it through there so I don't have any loose wire. Okay. So there's our wire to hang this on. You can see by going tight, it only gives you a little bit of get, which is what we want, or what I want for this one. All right, now to finish it off, all you need to do is apply a second coat of Mod Podge. Okay, so I'm gonna take my larger brush, kind of dip it in there, and you wanna go over it nice and smooth back and forth. You don't need to go heavy. You know, if you wanna do a few coats, we already have one on there covering our bike and our letters. This is just gonna kind of seal the deal for us. Okay, try going in one direction only. Just back and forth. Now, if you have any letters that you notice are kind of popping up, you can kind of push them back down with the Mod Podge. Keep it just nice, even. Just switch over here so you can see. I need a bigger desk. I need a bigger room. You know, my sign's not perfect, but you know, it's homemade, and I like that. I'd much rather receive something like this from my husband than knowing that he put the time into it versus something that I bought was perfect, right? All right, so there you have it, guys. There's our little sign. You can see the motorcycle is white, meaning the glue is still wet. It'll give off a light glaze to it, like a light gloss, maybe like a satin finish with the glue. But anyway, if you have any questions, um, please let me know. Hang on, I'm gonna share with you where I hang this in the shed.